Item number, SCP-518, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-518 is to be monitored by a field research team, consisting of at least three staff and one project lead, supplemented by two security staff. This team shall be based at Remote Observation Site 18, three kilometers from SCP-518. An automated security perimeter surrounding SCP-518 is to be established and maintained. One physical copy of SCP-518-1 is authorized to exist at any given time for the purposes of research. This copy is to be kept at all times in an opaque, protective sleeve, sealed in a locked container, and kept in Storage Locker 742 in Restricted Access Wing 1 of Site-93. One electronic copy is permitted to be accessible from authorized terminals at Site-93 and Remote Observation Site-18. Any unauthorized instances of SCP-518-1 discovered by Foundation personnel are to be destroyed immediately. Description SCP-518 is a localized anomalous phenomenon catalyzed by the dissemination and exposure of SCP-518-1. SCP-518 is, currently, a complex in a small valley consisting of 11 wooden structures in varying states of repair, designed and built in the style of structures common in newly settled areas of the American West during the mid-19th century. These structures are arranged in a manner inconsistent with an established settlement. Buildings are arranged in a roughly circular pattern, with no regard to road systems or natural topography. One structure is currently located on top of a creek. SCP-518 is located in rural Deschutes County, Oregon, United States, in the vicinity of the Metolius River. SCP-518-1 is a short narrative, first documented upon the initial exploration of SCP-518. Whenever SCP-518-1 is read in its entirety by a sapient, comprehending individual, SCP-518 undergoes spontaneous physical changes. In most cases, these changes entail the movement of structures in relation to each other, rearrangement of the interior features of these structures, and a small amount of subsidence in the immediate geographic vicinity of SCP-518. In some cases, readings of SCP-518-1 will cause new structures to appear, or existing structures to simply cease to exist. Research has determined that these physical changes occur either instantaneously or at speeds beyond the observational capability of current technology. The buildings that make up SCP-518 superficially resemble commonly found structures of the region during the 1850s and 1860s. In addition to several houses, there are currently a barn, a three-story hotel, and a sawmill. However, the interiors of these structures are atypical of traditional dwellings and establishments. Features such as walls, floors, and ceilings tend to be arbitrarily constructed. Houses have been observed to have rooms with no doors, non-level floors. One dwelling is constructed with a floor at a 37-degree angle, ceilings of a height of one meter or less, etc. Furniture and household items typical of the period are also present, but are arranged haphazardly. In several cases, chairs and beds have been observed nailed to walls and ceilings. Other buildings contain no features inside, while the barn merely covers an open shaft, extending to a depth of 120 meters. The land area comprising SCP-518 is gradually undergoing conversion into a sinkhole, and is currently experiencing subsidence at a rate of approximately 2 to 3 meters per SCP-518-1 event. Current projections estimate that SCP-518 will be completely submerged by the local water table after 25 to 30 additional SCP-518-1 events. Below is a partial transcription of SCP-518-1. This is the last will and testament of me, Asa Rutledge of Gretz Hollow, Kentucky, made this 11th day of February 1859. I bequeath no material possessions, having none. Though my soul be condemned to hell for what happened here, I direct that my final wishes be carried out in full. This place, and all that happened here, shall be forgotten by man, 
and buried under the earth until the day of judgment. Though nothing is hidden from the Almighty, this being the only atonement I can now offer, I will it thus. By the power left to me, which I pray is still sufficient to this task, let this testament be the means to conceal my shame, and let the tools of remembrance be turned to the act of forgetting. May providence hasten the vanishing of this place from the earth. Since the establishment of containment, the Foundation has documented fifteen spontaneous changes in the composition of SCP-518 that can be reasonably traced to the reading of SCP-518-1. Of these incidents, thirteen have occurred under controlled research conditions. Expansion Log 518-1 Upon initial containment in February of 1992 and the establishment of Remote Observation Site 18, Staff undertook an initial exploration of SCP-518. Note, at the time, SCP-518 consisted of nine structures and included a church and a schoolhouse that do not currently exist. The sawmill structure and two current houses had not yet manifested. A team consisting of four D-Class personnel was dispatched to the site, equipped with two-way radios, flashlights, water, emergency rations, crowbars, and a camcorder. Dr. Lupe Carmona, then the research director for SCP-518, supervised the exploration from Remote Observation Site 18. Selected transcripts are reproduced below. Dr. Carmona. Supplies have been checked and accounted for. All personnel present. D-3299-5, do you read me? D-3299-5. Copy. Dr. Carmona, time is 1,405 hours. Please proceed to the first structure in your field of view. D-94237, please keep the camcorder trained to your front in order to maintain our video feed. D-94237, copy. Video feed shows exploration team proceeding to an SCP-518-A structure resembling a house. Team reaches the front door and attempts to enter. Door is locked. D-3299-5. It won't budge. Dr. Carmona. You are authorized to force entry. D-22343 and D-9423-7. Force door open with crowbars. D-3299-5. It's pretty dark in there. Dr. Carmona. Illuminate the area and get video of the interior. Flashlights from off-camera reveal that the interior of the structure is typical of a structure of the apparent time period, with the exception of a dresser mounted on the ceiling and a floor sloping at a pronounced angle towards the southern wall. D-94237 You seeing this? Dr. Carmona Affirmative. Please proceed carefully into the house and document the surroundings. After 6 minutes and 58 seconds of visual documentation, a small door in the northwest corner of the structure is visible in the floor. Dr. Carmona, D-4898-3, please open the door in your field of view and document your findings. D-4898-3, copy. D-4898-3 opens the hatch in the floor. After other exploration members illuminate the opening, a crawl space is revealed to be accessible through the hatch. Dr. Carmona, D-4898-3 and D-2234-3, please proceed into the space in front of you. D-2234-3, I don't know, man, I think… Dr. Carmona, please proceed into the space in front of you. D-2234-3, copy. D-2234-3 and D-4898-3 take the camcorder and their flashlights into the crawl space. All indications are that it is an ordinary crawl space until D-22343 pauses. Dr. Carmona, you've stopped. Have you found anything? D-22343, there's holes all over the place in here. Almost sprained my damn ankle. Dr. Carmona, please describe what you're seeing in detail. D-22343, there's, there's a bunch of little rectangular holes in the dirt here, about uh, 50 centimeters or so long, maybe a little bigger, narrow. Dr. Carmona, 
Is there anything in the holes? D-22343. Hold on. Let me take a look. Um, it's, uh... What is that? D-48983 positions the camcorder over D-22343's shoulder. D-48983 appears to be handling an undetermined object while crouched over a hole. Dr. Carmona, what are you handling? Please refrain from any unnecessary forensic contamination. D-22343, it's, uh, it's nothing. There's nothing in any of these. Dr. Carmona, I don't believe it's necessary to remind you of the terms of your... D-48983, it's nothing. There's nothing in here. Dr. Carmona, please spend another few minutes documenting this space, and then proceed to the next staging point. Video feed indicates that the floor of the crawl space is filled with dozens of holes, corresponding to D-22343's description. D-48983 and D-22343 then rejoin the other exploration members without incident, and leave the structure. Video feed is turned off until the exploration team reaches the church structure, then present at SCP-518. Dr. Carmona orders the team to proceed inside, where they discover an entirely empty structure. The exploration team documents the interior until D-32995 pauses at the southwestern wall. Dr. Carmona, D-32995, do you have an observation? D-32995, there's some writing on the wall over here. Hey, get that camcorder over here. Dr. Carmona, is the writing legible? D-32995, mostly. It's kind of smudged in some places. Looks like it's written in soot. Here, let's get the video feed in here. Camcorder is brought to the writing, identified later as an instance of SCP-518-1. D-32995, this is the last will and testament of me. Not sure what this is. Dr. Carmona, please transcribe it as best you can. D-32995, copy that. D-32995 attempts to copy down SCP-518-1 on a small notepad. Discussion occurs between D-32995, D-22343, and D-94237 as to possible word choices for smudged portions of the original text. After approximately 25 minutes, D-32995 finishes writing and appears to read his notes. A low rumbling sound immediately starts and the camcorder appears to start shaking. D-94237. What? What the hell? What's going on? D-22343. Shit. Dr. Carmona. What's happening in there? D-22343. We gotta get out of here. Now! Now! Dr. Carmona. Permission to abort denied. Stand by and... D-48983 can be heard in the background to be softly laughing. An unidentified member of the exploration team starts screaming. A loud crashing noise is heard before audio and video contact is lost. Dr. Carmona. D-32995, do you read? What's going on in there? Do you read? End transcript. Item number. SCP-579. Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-579 is currently in Site 62C, a compound located approximately 80 kilometers from Site the main site. Knowledge of the existence of this site has been deemed unnecessary for all non-essential personnel who are not involved in SCP-579's containment. Site consists of building housing SCP-579 and living quarters for containment staff. SCP-579 is encased in a 30 meter by 30 meter by 30 meter unit made of data expunged, in which SCP-579 is kept in permanent suspension through use of electromagnets. Site is equipped with hardline to high command, through which all reports and notifications are to be made. Staff consists of two teams, each composed of 17 Level 1 personnel, 3 Level 2 personnel, and 1 Level 4 personnel, which are rotated bi-weekly. 
All instruments are to be checked each half hour to ensure their continued function. Changes in any measured attribute are to be immediately reported to high command. Any instrument or electronic device registering more than 0.2% from its median range of function or displaying any errors or lapses in functioning will result in automatic execution of Action 326 Israfil. Routine reports to high command are to be made hourly. If a report is not received within seven minutes of its scheduled time, Action 10 Israfil A is to be executed. Absolutely no action regarding SCP-579, other than those strictly outlined above, is to be taken. Description Data expunged Addendum 579001 Action 10 Israfil A Doors, windows, and other possible exits from site are to be sealed, preventing the transfer of personnel into or out of the site. Teams and resources required for Action 10 Israfil B are to be readied and moved into position. If reports are received by high command at the correct time, or if instruments or electronic devices return to their normal state, high command will issue an all-clear statement. If such a statement is not received within seven minutes of the commencement of Action 10 Israfil A, execute Action 10 Israfil B. If, at any time, any instruments or electronic devices near SCP-579 begin to display significant errors or deviations from normal functioning, Action 10 Israfil B must be executed immediately. If an all-clear statement is issued, at least 72 hours without further anomalies must pass before site can be unsealed and Action 10 Israfil B teams may stand down. Action 10 Israfil B Gateway of Site-62, SCP-004, is to be destroyed. This must be done, regardless of personnel or facilities remaining within the site. Remnants of the Gateway, or the Gateway itself, if destruction proves impossible, are to be contained in the same manner as SCP-579. High Command will then issue further instruction. Addendum 579002 in the event of a successful Action 10 Israfil B, all sealed documents regarding SCP-579 are to be released to all personnel involved with the action. Procedures as outlined within the documents are to be followed, along with contingency plans if necessary. Be aware that even with the successful execution of Action 10 Israfil B, estimates place the occurrence of data expunged at one year or less. If SCP-579 is mentioned, in any capacity, by SCP- any anti-foundation or public groups, or data expunged, it is recommended that Action 10 Israfil A be executed as planned immediately. In the event of an unsuccessful Action 10 Israfil B, no further action will be necessary. Data expunged. Addendum 579 Timeline Event 0 SCP-579 is discovered. Point of origin is data expunged. Event 1. Initial assessment of SCP-579 is undertaken. Event 2. SCP-579 is inadvertently removed from its point of origin. Events 3 through 7. Data expunged. Event 8. SCP-579 is successfully contained. Event 9. SCP-579 is moved to Site-4. Event 10. Containment failed. Loss of Site-4. Event 11. SCP-579 is successfully contained. Event 12. SCP-579 is moved to Site-31. Event 13. Containment failed. Loss of Site-31. Event 14. SCP-579 is successfully contained. Event 15. SCP-579 is moved to Site-26. Event 16. Containment failed. Loss of Site-26. Event 17. SCP-579 is successfully contained. Event 18. Attempt is made to destroy SCP-579. Attempt failed. Event 19. 
Attempt is made to destroy SCP-579. Attempt failed. Event 20. Attempt is made to destroy SCP-579. Attempt failed. Event 21. Attempt is made to destroy SCP-579. Attempt failed. Event 22. Containment failed. Events 23 and 24. Data expunged. Event 25. SCP-579 is successfully contained. Event 26. SCP-579 is transported to vicinity of point of origin. Event 27. Attempted to return SCP-579 to point of origin. Attempt failed. Event 28. Attempted to return SCP-579 to point of origin. Attempt failed. Event 29. Attempted to return SCP-579 to point of origin. Attempt failed. Event 30. Attempted to return SCP-579 to point of origin. Attempt failed, resulting in the loss of point of origin. Event 31. Containment failed. Events 32 through 35. Data expunged. Event 36. SCP-579 is successfully contained. Event 37. SCP-579 is moved to site. Event 38. SCP-579 undergoes previously unobserved changes, believed to involve data expunged. Containment holds, though this is determined not to be attributable to containment procedure. Event 39. High Command issues lockdown on site. Event 40. Agent M formulates current containment plan. Event 41. Site 62C is constructed. Event 42. SCP-579 is moved to Site- Event 43. High Command seals all data not needed for containment of SCP-579. Termination of agents to prevent data leakage regarding SCP-579 is deemed unnecessary, as only seven such agents remain. Said agents are retained as advisors, should future events concerning SCP-579 occur. Item Number SCP-586 Object Class Scarf Special Containment Procedures SCP-586 is assigned a storage container in Salty 4. Key may be obtained from the main office with presentation from Dr. No further secretary is deemed necessary for the object. Description SCP-586 is a smelt metallic object, pale green in color. The anomalous profession of the object was discovered by accident. In any sentence written about the object, at least one typist will be created. Specifically, one or more words will be replaced by an incorrect word. Lab Report 586A in this test, the portion of this sentence data plunged. Lab Report 586B A test to determine if SCP-586 has an effective range has turned up the following results. A D personnel was seated one meter from the object and gassed to write the control phrase, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. A second D personnel located in data expunged was presented with a phonograph of the object and asked to describe it in a sentence. Result 1. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Result 2. It looks like a piece of garden horse. Lab Report 586C. 10D personnel were asked to transcribe the short phrase, it is. All were successful. Same personnel were then shown the object and asked to describe it using the phrase they had earlier transcribed. Results. It, it. Is, is. If, is. Illinois. I, hiss. Titties. Ibis. Iris. Italy. Data expanded. Lab Report 586D. Native speakers of Swahili, Japanese, Gelatin, and Arabic were asked to describe the device in their native language. 
Each description contained at least one word in the respective language. That was not what the person's hand intended to write. Addendum. For the last time, if you turn in a report with a dozen misspellings, my orifice is too close to 586 will not be accepted as an excuse. There is no bleed effect. As evidenced by LR586B, unless you are writing about the object itself, you will not be effect. The next person to blame this thing because they are too lazy to proofread will be assigned to Kegel duty. Dr. Item number. SCP-626. Object Class. Safe. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-626 is to be kept in a standard lockbox at Site-19's High Value Item Storage Facility. Standard Positive Action Defenses, Explosive, Chemical, Biological, and Mimetic are to be in place at all times, according to Standard Operating Procedure. Research is currently suspended, pending review. Description SCP-626 is a metallic structure, approximately 72 centimeters in height. While SCP-626 appears to be made of some sturdy material, it has very low mass for its volume, possibly indicating that it is hollow. It consists of a base, which rises to a central stem supporting a sphere. The sphere's surface is broken by numerous protrusions, each of which ends in a sphere in a similar arrangement to the base. When SCP-626 is in the presence of a human being, the subject's sight begins to deteriorate. Close examination reveals that the rods and cones within the eye begin to dissipate, rendering the eye unable to differentiate shapes and colors. After approximately seven hours, the subject is unable to detect any light through the eyes. The loss of vision occurs whether or not the subject is able to see SCP-626, but appears to be dependent on the subject's knowledge that SCP-626 is present. Any material that can block visible light will also block the effects of SCP-626. After at least 15 hours of exposure to SCP-626, the subject's sight begins to return. Post-mortem examination of subjects' eyes from this stage have shown no rods or cones are present any longer, yet the subject regains the ability to see color, shape, and degrees of light and darkness. Testing has shown that the restored vision is often sharper than the subject's previous visual acuity. Once vision is fully restored, which usually occurs in under 30 minutes, subject begins experiencing visual hallucinations, often of ghosts or other humanoid beings that seemingly ignore our physical reality. At this stage, subjects will progress to the final stage, even if removed from SCP-626's presence. Once hallucinations begin, the subject will begin a gradual mental deterioration, beginning with a loss of logical and speech capabilities. Over the course of several days, the subject's brain functions will gradually cease. During this time, the subject may attempt to follow their hallucinations through walls and other solid objects. Care should be taken to ensure the subjects do not harm themselves. Once all major brain function is lost, the subject becomes catatonic and dies within several hours. Upon the subject's death, their eyes shrivel and dry out, all liquids evaporating from them in a matter of seconds. No matter the distance between the subject and SCP-626 at time of death, the evaporated fluid condenses on the surface of SCP-626 and is then apparently absorbed into its structure. Addendum Dr. has expressed concern over the details of some of the most recent subject's hallucinations. The subject was able to describe a ghost standing behind Dr. which resembled the researcher's wife who had died several months ago of congenital heart failure. The subject, with no prior knowledge of Dr. or his family, was able to answer several questions about Mrs. R's medical condition at the time of her death. Further research suspended, pending O5 level review.
Item number, SCP-683. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-683 is to be kept in a standard 8x8x5-meter research bay, equipped with a portable gas-powered generator. SCP-683 itself is to be covered with a suitably large, opaque drop cloth to prevent inadvertent visual contact when not involved in active research. Research bay door should meet Level 2 Hazard Control Rating, Steel Door, Reinforced Hinges, SC Passport Keycard Access with Manual Override, but without the standard observation window. Video surveillance is restricted to this exterior door until testing is approved for recorded viewing of SCP-683. No guards should be posted, unless approved by Level 3 or higher administrative staff. Again, to prevent possible inadvertent visual contact. No food or drink is permitted within 20 meters of the containment area. SCP-683 is currently held in Research Bay Zingiber 4 at Site-19 under these conditions. Description SCP-683 consists of two objects, SCP-683-1 and SCP-683-2. When its unique properties are activated, it will produce samples of SCP-683-3. SCP-683-1 is a white 1953 Crosley Shelvador brand refrigerator, showing moderate external wear. Internally, SCP-683-1 appears clean and well-maintained regardless of contents, results of testing procedures, or deliberate attempts to soil it. SCP-683-1's power cord terminates in an unknown plug configuration that has proven incompatible with modern outlets. Foundation electrical engineers have constructed an adapter, Inventory Control Code 19 Alice 6837, allowing SCP-683-1 to run via a standard gas-powered home generator, which is used for all testing. When supplied with electrical power, SCP-683-1 functions adequately as a refrigeration unit. SCP-683-1's unusual properties will function with or without electrical power, but when power is provided, instances of SCP-683-3 produced do not appear to decay or spoil as long as they are kept within the unit. SCP-683-2 is a child's, age approximated at between 5 and 7 years, drawing on standard 8.5 inch by 11 inch white paper, oriented as a landscape and affixed by unknown means to SCP-683-1's exterior. SCP-683-2 appears to have been created with pencil and felt pen, showing evidence of moderate water damage at some point in its past. The drawing depicts a mountainous exterior landscape with an anthropomorphic sun, a house, a well, a dog, various vegetation, and a central figure, which appears to be wearing a chef's toque. Any person either uttering disparaging remarks about SCP-683-2 or attempting to remove it from the surface of SCP-683-1 begins to incur damage to both internal organs and skin or musculature upon ingesting any food item. The damage manifests as the excision of tissue from various locations on the body equal in mass to the food ingested. This effect ceases once the victim has ingested 0.42 kilograms worth of food and an equal amount of tissue has been excised. Though observably painful, tissue is excised seemingly instantaneously following each bite of food and has yet to strike any internal structure that would cause the death of the subject before the 0.42 kilogram threshold is reached. All subjects have expired within 26 days of last excision. Once the 0.42 kilogram excision of tissue is complete, a brown lunch-style paper bag, hereafter SCP-683-3, will appear in the interior of SCP-683-1. SCP-683-3 has consistently been labeled with the name ERIC. Text appears symmetrically in capital letters printed in black ink. Writing style appears consistent with each sample of SCP-683-3. With each appearance, SCP-683-3 has contained the following. A sandwich consisting of two pieces of white bread, 
crusts removed, and 0.21 kilograms of various excised flesh and viscera. DNA analysis has confirmed it to be that of subjects who last disparaged or attempted to remove SCP-683-2. A plastic zip-top bag containing 0.21 kilograms of various excised flesh and viscera. DNA analysis has again confirmed it to be that of subjects who last disparaged or attempted to remove SCP-683-2. A plastic zip-top bag containing three chocolate chip cookies measuring approximately 9 centimeters in diameter. Testing shows no abnormalities or traces of DNA. A 3 inch by 5 inch note card reading, Be a good boy today. Ink is black and handwriting is consistent in style with the Eric written on SCP-6833's exterior. Following testing, all instances of SCP-6833 have been incinerated with no unusual effects. SCP-683-2 cannot be removed from SCP-683-1, and all attempts to do so have resulted in the activation of SCP-683's unusual properties. Without any attempt to remove it, SCP-683-2 has been set alight and incinerated via a simple match on three occasions but has returned to the surface of SCP-6831 within 68 hours each time. Despite expectations, D-Class personnel who performed the incinerations were unaffected by SCP-683. If multiple subjects disparage or attempt to remove SCP-683-2 at one time, only the first subject to do so experiences its effects. No further subjects can be affected until production of an instance of SCP-683-3. Subjects who fast, following removal attempts, or disparaging of SCP-683-2 are unaffected until they attempt to ingest food. To date, two subjects have starved themselves to death without suffering any effect from SCP-683. Subjects fed intravenously following removal attempts or disparaging of SCP-683-2 have been affected as if they were consuming solid foods. Discovery SCP-683 was discovered in a storage unit adjacent to the home of one Yolanda of Washington, a collector of vintage refrigerators and furnishings. Miss claims to have simply found SCP-683 unattended on a street corner in late July, 19... Her nephew, who reportedly helped her move the item, died two weeks following the move. COD on cert listed as complications from hernia. The item was brought to the Foundation's attention when an app raiser occasionally under contract with the Foundation, through front agency sentiments of centuries past LTD became a victim of SCP-683's effects while evaluating Miss R***'s find. When asked why she never attempted to remove SCP-683-2, Miss R*** replied, It's a nice little picture, isn't it? Why take it down? Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.